Hey guys, Adam here. I'm going to basically show you how you can get your character moving around with a player controller. Seems like a lot of tutorials don't really show you that setup and so they show you how to make a pawn or something and then when you're getting a bit more advanced in your game, you know, you don't really get uh, what you want out of the pawn and everything starts to get really laggy and your pawn starts lagging out in the blueprint from what I've seen anyways. And Right now I'm just showing you how my player controller moves around, you know, different effects, top down, all that, and also uh, keyboard inputs. But yeah, this is uh, what I'm going to show you how to make. So if you guys can bear with me, I'll go ahead and go through that. Alright, first you need to get your third person character, and you need to get your top down controller. Now you can go to both example uh, maps and just go ahead and pull this from the example content they have available. You just need to go onto it, right click Asset Actions, Migrate, and then select your content folder. And that's all you gotta do. Or the content folder of your project that is. So we'll go ahead and go into this and get started. So first you need to have a folder so that way you can do the merge properly. So you go in here and you move that in, get that to work. Okay, and then here. Okay, then we open it up and we go ahead and uh, take a look at our third person character. And you can see it's got all this logic in here. I'll go ahead and open up my character to show you that it's not going to have any logic in it. And you can verify that it is using this from just look at the game mode. And you can see there's nothing in here. Nothing at all. Not even variables or anything to pull. Just the character movement component is all you really need. And you can see my values here if you want to take a look at those. Nothing really uh, different here. Just basically following from the tutorial on Unreal. And uh, here's the third person character that we have, so I'll go ahead and close that. Now, you're going to need to pull this data and put it into your controller. And you can do that by control c it. We'll delete it afterwards, just don't, don't delete it yet, because you might need to reference exactly what it's going to do, because it's going to get rid of all these blue uh, boxes here. You're going to have to put those back in. So, let's go ahead and go into our... Prints. And actually, that closed my character controller. Go in here to top down controller. And it's going to go ahead and have this logic here for the click and go there kind of thing. There we go. As I said, got rid of all the blue boxes. So need to worry. There's a simple way to get back. Just need to type in add yaw input. For your turn right. Then your add input uh, pitch. Sorry, I'm kind of a neat freak if it doesn't look nice. Then we need to do something special with this one. Got to uncheck that box there. You don't want the action event. That's your input action right there. You want the character. And then we need to stop jumping. And you can press Control W to do that. Alright, next we need Add Movement.
There we go. Okay, now everything should be set up, but we're going to get some ears. And I'll show you why. Because we have our variables. We need to go ahead and... Come on. There we go. Great variable. Now these are both at 45. So we'll go ahead and compile again. Still going to get some errors. Don't worry. Okay. And then we're going to see the ears are being down here. This is because we need to do a cast. And it's not really that hard. You just need to get player pawn. There we go. Now this has to be run through a tick because it's going to automatically keep checking every time you do this input. Or actually, I think we could do a begin play. We'll go ahead and try that. And then we just go ahead and set our data here. You can also hold down control if you want to do that. You like this. There you go. Okay, everything should be playing now, but we need to get our cast to execute. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and try this with an event begin play. Okay. You could also, I think there's a construction script. Not sure. Oh, there it is. You could also put that in there. Probably better if we do that. Hmm. Maybe I can't. Nope. Okay, so forget about that. I'm just trying it out. Okay, and we should be able to play here and see if this works. Oh wait, I forgot, we gotta make a game mode first for all this. So we do a blueprint class, game mode. And we do, let's call it tutorial. And on here, we go ahead and go into our details and we check off everything. So we're using a top-down controller. We're using the third person. And then that should work for that. Now for game state, uh, I just sort of leave that as game state. Player state, the same thing. What we want to change though is our HUD because I'm using something called a character controller HUD. Basically, I have a uh, custom cursor to allow this to work. And you can ask more about from my YouTube partner. He's the one that helped me with that. All right, so let's see if that works. As you can see, we, oh, forgot. Don't want to fool you guys the wrong way. You got to change it in your world settings first. So we go to tutorial. Okay. Resave that. Okay, there we go. So now everything's working. I don't have the advanced camera working for you guys, the one that would rotate the camera when you're playing, but basically he can move around. Like so. And you can move the mouse. But there's something going on with our cursor. I forgot to turn off something. Ah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, make sure you turn this off. Because uh, if you're using a custom cursor, you turn that off and then it should automatically start rotating. There we go. So that's a little bug there that I found. And that's uh, basically it. So if you guys have any questions, let me know.
I'll go ahead and respond accordingly. And if you need help on that custom cursor, reach out to my YouTube partner at blendertech.com. And I'll see you guys later.